It is real easy to forget what it's like to be a first-time shepherd. I had an experience recently that reminded me really of what that steep learning curve is like and realized that it would be important to share really what are some of the things that a first-time shepherd might not know going into this. So my friend and neighbor has been interested for a long time of getting into sheep. And it just so happened that the timing worked out great that as he finally got his pasture ready, that I was ready to offload my flock of full blood Dorper so I can start over. So it worked out really nice. I sold my friend uh, two rams uh, so he can start his flock. And I found out that there was a lot of advice that I, I thought was maybe obvious, but I realize now looking back, if you've never kept sheep before, even if you have experience with other animals, you'd be surprised to know the things that sheep require. So today I've got five things that I think are pretty valuable for anyone who is getting into sheep for the first time. So right now I'm standing uh, on the corner of my neighbor's property. You can see the rams are hanging out and following me. And uh, you can see back there where the solar panels are. You can kind of see some fence. Uh, that's my property. So along with buying local, which which is a good lesson, my first tip that, that I gave him was start with rams. A lot of people want to start raising sheep with a small flock. They want they want ewes and, and I get it. And I've been in that boat where you're so eager to start and you just say, well I can't be profitable until I start, you know, having lambs. And to have lambs you need ewes. That's true. But I think that there's kind of a disservice to yourself and to the sheep if you just jump into an enterprise like that. I know I made tons of mistakes. A lot of things can go wrong. Breeding animals and just raising out rams is a very different story. So there's kind of two ways to do this. I, I recommend, you know, start with a small number of rams, uh, depending on your size, you know, somewhere between like two to 10 uh, weaned rams and just raise them out to a finishing weight. Another way that you can do this, and this is the way my neighbor is doing it, he doesn't intend to eat these two rams. Um, both of them are intact uh, rams and his goal his idea is uh, to get ewes later in the year and uh, introduce the ewes to the rams so that's kind of option two buy some rams uh, keep them for a few months before you before you have any ewes which on that note hey anybody anybody near me um, in central north carolina or southern virginia who who's looking to offload some ewes this year um, let me know in the comments. Let's connect. Okay, the second piece of advice that I ended up giving was around the question, what do I feed them? Um, a lot of people go into this thinking that they have to go to tractor supply and buy a pallet of sheep feed to to be getting into this. Uh, no, I, I don't agree with that. Um, I think if you you know want to get anything in a bag, just get some you know pelleted alfalfa or some hay cubes. Um, just get them grass. They're going to be fine. Now, obviously, you can see uh, my friend's uh, pasture, maybe I should put pasture in air quotes, um, hasn't quite come up yet. He cleared this all by himself. Kudos to him. His pasture hasn't come up yet. And so he does need to supplement them. And the advice that I gave him was supplement just with some hay. Um, these are not pregnant ewes. They don't need alfalfa. Um, they're rams that aren't you know, quote unquote, on the job right now. They're not trying to cover any, any use. So they don't need expensive hay. So I think he's just got some, like a fescue or a Timothy mix. Um, and that's fine. Because what he's doing here, what I advise him, this is bale grazing. Okay, so like, see, look back at my pasture back there. That's largely a bale grazed effort. I just did a video that kind of describes a little bit about my pasture methodology. But what I have back there, it looked like this, 18 months ago after my land got cleared. So yes, you do have to supplement with hay, but when you focus on fertility, which happens when you put your animals on the land, particularly ruminants, you're gonna guarantee you're gonna have grass come up. So yes, you can throw out seed if you're antsy. I won't judge anybody for doing that. I've definitely thrown out seed before, but by and large, um, I think he's gonna be doing just fine here. And because in addition to their hay, there's plenty of roughage and you know trees and leaves they've got plenty of things to keep them busy throughout the day so yeah he get you know he he feeds them maybe he even overfeeds them with hay but uh they're doing just fine uh without hay they've got enough to stay busy and enough hay to get all their calories in 
Just in case anybody thinks I'm crazy when I said they've got plenty of stuff to pick at. Um, I love that my friend left all this stuff here. He basically cleared some lanes in these kind of thickets here. Um, these dudes have, have plenty to pick at. So like I said, I don't expect all their calories to come from leaves. It's enough to keep them busy and they've got hay to meet the rest of their caloric needs until summer when we get some rain. Um, and I know that there's going to be grass and a lot of roughage to come in because Dorper sheep, and really most any sheep, are going to be pretty darn happy with whatever they can find. Look at that. That's what you want to see. Nature's pruners. Hard at work. Hey, one last thing about hay that uh, my friend did not know, and this is specific to sheep. Spent hay or wet hay is not a great situation for sheep. Um, stuff that a cow will tolerate, a sheep will probably not. Moldy hay don't be feeding moldy hay to sheep, okay? Not only will they not eat it, but even if they are desperate, um, it could definitely make them sick. So no moldy hay. So my third principle that I shared with my friend is the idea of bale grazing, um, which is exactly what he's doing here. He puts out hay for his sheep and uh, basically lets them fertilize this area. Um, truth be told, he's gonna need a lot more sheep um, to, to fertilize this. He's got about three and a half acres of you know pasture fenced in here. These two rams aren't gonna make much of a dent. Um, but bale grazing is essentially the idea where you put out hay and you let the sheep eat the hay, turn that hay into fertilizer in the form of sheep manure, and uh, they, they help this little grass come up. Okay, let me just illustrate the power of bale grazing. This is a separate neighbor, so now I'm talking about a third neighbor um, who has not built his home site here yet but eventually he will. Um, they, as you can probably tell, um, they seeded this themselves with, um, with heavy machinery. So it looks really pretty, like I'm, you know, I live down there and I get to look at this grassy knoll um, when I'm doing my chores, so I love looking at this. But look at the grass. Um, I mean, that's fine. It's not tall, it's not great. And these are the fruits of bale grazing. Um, as you can see, a lot more variety, a lot more established, a lot more even. Um, really good grazing ground. This is all native, so I don't really have to care for it. So I did throw some clover out. So any clover that you see, I did bring that here. But most everything else is about as native as you can get. So this is just another reason for bale grazing. I have kind of a before and after from what my neighbors got going on right now versus what I've got currently. Okay, the fourth piece of advice I was asked was what do what do I do about shelter? What what needs do they have? I don't have a barn. And that's going to be just fine. Um, so I always believe that shelter is the easier, the better, the more homemade, the better. Um, all you got to do is make sure it won't blow away, really. Um, and I love what he did. He basically just stacked some pallets upright using T-posts. Um, and he had a big plastic platform that he's mounted there and it's done great. Um, so that's just a good lesson. Uh, you know, someone else doing it the right way. If you can build it for cheap or for free, it's going to be better than the things that cost hundreds of dollars that, that you can get elsewhere. I have spent hundreds of dollars on, on portable shelters, uh, specifically for sheep and they don't, <clears throat> they don't stand up to harsh storms. Um, these have been great for him. So for these two rams, more than enough because most of the time when it rains, they're fine anyway. And just another note on DIYing stuff. Um, this is his waterer, his, his, uh, his bucket for watering. <clears throat> um, pretty, pretty interesting setup here. It's basically the bottom or the top of an IBC tote that he kind of built a frame around. Just again, just free stuff lying around. Okay, so the fifth and last piece of advice that I ended up giving is really quite interesting because it's something that's so foundational to sheep and my mindset now, but something I didn't even know this word or phrase when I got started with sheep. And that is rotational grazing. Yes, um, believe it or not, I had no idea what rotational grazing was um, and uh, my friend was not prepared for it either. So luckily, I will give this disclaimer. He's got like three and a half acres here, uh, two rams on it. I mean, obviously, best case scenario is always mob grazing, but he's going to be able to get away without rotational grazing for now. 
Um, obviously, he has no grass and he's feeding hay. He's going to be just fine. Um, however, when he ups his numbers of sheep and uh, starts getting used on his property, he'll need to rotational graze. So he was not familiar with, with the benefits of that or why you really do need to do it. In the wonderful land of North Carolina where we have rain and sh sunshine, which makes the grass grow. Unfortunately, in the hot summer months, um, it also makes the parasites grow. So mob grazing, rotational grazing, really the benefit of that for him and for anyone is going to be um, pasture maintenance. Uh, so intensively grazing one area and moving your sheep off of it for an extended period of time, that's going to help your grass grow. So it's going to help with fertilization intense intensity in those areas. Um, and of course it helps with the parasite cycle. Um, I'm not, this video isn't about the parasite cycle, but the short version is, you know, all ruminants more or less are going to carry some kind of parasite load. What you're trying to beat is the cycle of the parasites. When they, when they poop out the eggs, the eggs, you know, fertilize and mature into a different stage of that animal or that bug, that parasite. Um, they reconsume it in a, in a more adult stage. It enters in different parts of their body and starts wreaking havoc, usually in the form of robbing them of nutrients, protein, they go anemic, and they die. Rotational grazing beats that. Now, of course, there's a million things that could be in a video like this. You know, I didn't talk at all about mineral considerations, for example. But for the most part, I found that there's a lot of information about that. The goal of this was to be what, were, what are the five things that uh, I didn't know and before I started and he didn't know even as a very informed person going into sheep. So I'd be curious, what did I miss? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to know. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. I'll see you on the next video.